Can you ever be happy again after a narcissistic or a borderline relationship breakup? Reverse narcissistic abuse. Don't just heal the narcissistic abuse. Reverse the narcissistic devaluation programming because you have value. You are lovable simply because you exist. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. All right. So my question for you. Can you ever be happy again after a NARC or BPD breakup? So before we get into this, I want to help you get into a helpful frame of mind because your mindset is your biggest enemy. So my question for you is, do you want to be happy? Just ask yourself that question. Do you want to be happy? Imagine being in a state where you feel loved, where you feel seen, where you feel accepted, where you feel safe, where you don't feel criticized all the time. Just spend a moment just getting in touch with a feeling of feeling criticized. Do you feel like that? Do you spend your days feeling like that? How, why am I asking these questions? I've felt all of this. This is something I'm very familiar with. And uh, for me, in my abusive relationship that I was in, uh, I was criticized all the time. And even if I wasn't being, you know, verbally attacked, I felt criticized. I felt unworthy. I felt unlovable. I felt like I had to do things perfectly. I was constantly walking on eggshells and I was not happy. I wanted to be happy and I had the fantasy that if I could just do things right, if I could just fix my partner, if I could just make her feel loved, then I would finally be happy. She would finally love me again like she did those first two weeks. The most amazing love I'd ever had in my life or so I thought. So do you want to feel better? Do you want to be happy? Because you're going to need to come back to that question as we get into this video, because what's going to happen now is I am going to give you the tools to become happy. But your mind and your programming is going to step in and it is going to resist. And I am going to go to war with your resistance. So just know when I come at you with looking at your thinking, it isn't about a personal attack. I am actually trying to defuse the time bomb in your mind that is working to keep you unhappy. That's it. So whenever you feel like I'm saying something and your ego gets in there and your ego wants to say no and you want to fight with me and argue with me, resist what I'm saying, I want you to stop and go, hang on, do I want to be happy? This guy's trying to help me be happy. Okay? All right. So um, we're going to take a look at some quotes here. So. You know, look, here's again, here's the, the, the fact of the matter. I've already given everybody who's been on this channel. If you've spent any time on this channel, I've already given you the answer. I've given you the medicine. You know, you go to the doctor and you've got a boil on your chest and it's seeping pus. The guy goes, oh, my God, you've got a bacterial infection. Here, take this antibiotic twice a day for two weeks. Follow the directions. And you go home and you look at it and you read it and then you go and type in and you study it and you change your sleeping habits and you, you know, and you go back to the doctor a week later and the pus is still everywhere. And he says, what the hell's going on? Did you take the medication? You said, yeah, sort of. I mean, I read it and I studied it and then I went and studied the type of bacteria you said I had and then I studied the antibiotics and I've changed my sleeping patterns and I'm in a more positive mindset. Doctors are going to go, would you shut up and just take the pill already? You'd, you'd be cured by now. That's why I get frustrated. At the same time, I know that you suffer from 
a mindset that is working against your happiness. The enemy is inside of your mind. And that's the person that I'm frustrated with. And, you know, I'm just trying to get to you. So when I ask you practical questions like, do you want to be happy? I want you to sit there and ask yourself that. Because if you can tap into the overwhelming desire that you have to be happy and safe and feel loved, and when that becomes more important to you than anything else, you'll have the ability to take the actions that will give you what you need. All right. So um, I'm going to first I'm going to read to you because I'm not going to put all the quotes up here, but I'm going to read to you what somebody came to me and said. Bear in mind, this is somebody who's been on the channel by their own admission. They already know what to do. This is why it's frustrating. Well, I told you what to do. This person talked themselves out of it, but they still want to be on the channel and they still want to ask me questions. So first, this person, uh, this is in re response to my video, what is PTSD, cognitive dissonance? Why are you probably still suffering? And this person then comes on and gives me this made up arbitrary uh, example. I mean, they've made up this imaginary scenario. And again, this is what? This is the resistance of their mind. I'm not going to get into it, but they make up this arbitrary scenario of a relationship and then ask, is this codependent? And uh, I took a couple of quotes from it and I said, yes, this is the perfect example of codependence. And here's the answer. And I gave the link to go do the one thing. By the way, if you want to know what the one thing is, it's very simple. All you do is go onto my YouTube channel page and type into the search engine the one thing and you'll find the video. What? You don't know how to do that because you're a millennial and you've never learned how to <laughs> put effort into things? No problem. Go on to Google and type in how to search within somebody's YouTube channel on an iPhone, iPad, and you'll find out exactly how to search on somebody's YouTube channel for keywords. Find anything you want. So now you don't have an excuse. You want to find out what the one thing is? You can put 10 seconds of effort into it. And you can find it on my channel. I also tell you exactly what to do in my book. You can find it, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. You can go look for it on Amazon, Kindle, or Audible. All right, so I respond to these arbitrary made-up examples of, you know, a, a relationship. And I said, yes, they are absolutely codependent. He responds and he says, uh, let's see, did I, do I have it here? He responds and he says, wasn't sure you were going to read the long post. Thanks. Truth is, I shouldn't have read the long post because now I'm buying into, you know, I'm buying into your nonsense because I've already given you the, and I already know you know, I've already given you the instructions on exactly what to do. You're going to tell us later you didn't do that. But this is part of the resistance to continue to talk about it and to make yourself different. So the underlying assumption, you know, when you go to the doctor and you have a bacterial infection, number one, the doctor sees you as human. And he knows that every single human, if they have this particular thing, if they take this medication, they will heal. So he's generalizing. I'm generalizing. You're a human being and you're in uh, a devaluing, abusive, narcissistic relationship. You're no different than anybody else. Any other human in your position is going to be thinking the same way and responding. You think that your thinking is coming from some awareness and, and some kind of unique interaction with the environment. It's not. It is just like your body having a response to an infection. Everybody's body responds the same. It responds with inflammation and pus and heat and all of it. Everybody's body does the same thing. Your mind will do the same thing. Your mind is resisting. Your mind is in a state of PTSD and you are resisting the cure. 
This is the, the weird, crazy part of what happens. This is how you've been programmed. You've been in a relationship with an abuser. And abusers go in and they mess with your brain. They go in and they tinker with it so that you will respond in all of these irrational, self-defeating ways. I come along and your first instinct is to, is to destroy the, you know, it's like I give you a map and you start writing all over it and changing it and crossing things out because you think you know better than me. And if you did, you wouldn't be on this channel. I'm, I'm, you're listening to me because I have accomplished something that you want, which is what? To be happy. And you want to be free of the pain that still lingers within you, even though the relationship is over. All right, so this person says, wasn't sure you were going to read the long post. As you can see, I am struggling, accepting that I am a codependent. And he thinks that that's unique to him. So let's do some, uh, let's go back and take a look at what it means to be a codependent. Codependence is a relationship dynamic where a dysfunctional person must be enabled or regulated by someone less dysfunctional. So you have been in a relationship dynamic that is codependent. So you can accept that. I know your brain can accept that. But then when I say that you're a codependent, you're going to say, no, not me. So, you, so here we have underneath that the definition of what a codependent is, which is the individual who takes on the responsibility, really the irrational responsibility, of regulating or enabling the less functional partner. So that, by definition, makes you a codependent. Why are you struggling? You're struggling to accept it? That's like, again, you go to the doctor and you got pus coming out of your shoulder and you're struggling to accept that you've been infected with, you know, a cat scratched you and it infected you. You're not going to have a problem with that. You want to know why you don't have a problem with accepting that the cat scratched you and it created an infection and you need to take antibiotics? The reason why that's not a problem for you is because you don't have any value judgments about it. You don't feel stupid. You don't feel bad because, you know, it could happen to anybody. And it's just that this is what the body does when a cat who's been clawing around in his own poop in the cat box scratches you. It gets infected. And the doctor says, oh, it's an infection. You go, oh, okay. He gives you the antibiotics and you go, and it's all over. You forget about it. A week later, you've forgotten about it. You go and you pet your cat and you play, you know, mousy with him or whatever, and everything's fine. You get involved with a borderline or a narcissist and they mess with your brain and they tell you you have to be perfect. And so now your survival depends on you thinking you're perfect. So when I come along and I tell you you're a codependent, you're messed up irrational brain which is trying to protect itself says I am not a codependent I'm perfect don't tell me I'm not perfect but here's why I, my scenario is unique my scenario is unique because my cat isn't you know he's he's not a calico he's he's a, he's an orange cat and you know and not only that but he's he's two inches taller than most other cat and the, and the doctors went I don't care that's what I'm doing. When you're telling me, well, mine, and the only thing about, well, see, mine, and I don't think I'm a codependent because I, I, I'm like, I don't care. So accept that you're a human being like everybody else. Accept that this is what happens when you get involved with an irrational, abusive person. They mess with your brain so that your response to everything in life is, am I a good person? Not, am I happy? That was my first question to you. So go back to that. The reason why I started this video with the question of, are you happy? Do you want to be happy? Because that's not what you ask yourself. What you ask yourself is, am I a good person? Am I correct here? And you'd much rather look good than actually be happy. You remember, if you're old enough, you remember from... Uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, you look marvelous. It's better to look good than to feel good. That's you. 
You want to look good more than you want to feel good. That is called codependence. Because codependence, the definition of codependence is when your lovability, which is your survival, it's not just I'm lovable, it's your survival. Inside of you, your nervous system feels you will die if you don't get love. All infants die. The first thing that will kill an infant is lack of love. So your desire to get love is more stronger than anything else. Which is why when I tell you how to heal, your first response is, but I don't want to look bad. Don't tell me I'm a codependent. I'm not a codependent. You're more, much more interested in how you look than how you feel. So forget about how you look and ask yourself, are you happy? Do you want to be happy? I'm giving you the answer to that. I'm giving you the path to that. All right. So um, he's struggling to accept that he's a codependent. And then he says, my therapist told me it doesn't apply to me. Almost all of the other YouTube videos on BPD relationships never bring up codependency. So what you're telling me is that you have zero ability. This is what you're saying. You're saying you have zero ability within yourself to make a rational conclusion. And you're more interested in what people say. So again, it's about looking good. And this is called triangulation. So if you're in therapy, you know what triangulation is. Little kids do it all the time. Mom, Johnny's in my place. Johnny, get out of Bobby's place. So you're triangulating with me. Somebody else, two other people. So now there's a reputation thing. And if I listen to you, then this therapist who has a reputation is going to say I'm wrong. And then the other people on the channel, the, the video channels on YouTube, they're going to say, so what's more important? To look good or to be happy? Is what your therapist telling you? Is it making you happy? There's a reason I'm not in therapy anymore. I was in therapy for 30 years. I was in group therapy for 30 years. The reason why I walked away is because most therapy for non-disordered people doesn't work. Talk therapy doesn't work. And therapists don't know what the hell they're doing. Now, I'm not going to say all therapists don't know what they're doing because some therapists are in 12 steps. By the way, if you want to find a good therapist, the first question you should ask when you go to see a therapist, the first question is, what is your opinion of the 12 steps? You want a therapist who is going to be excited about the idea of you being in the 12 steps because a therapist who's worth their salt is going to know that, oh my God, you're going to make my job so much easier if you're working the 12 steps because now I don't have to, you know, it makes their job much easier. If they're not aware of that, then that's not a therapist that knows a hell of a lot and is worth your time. Find a therapist that's going to support that. So this therapist that you're talking about, I'm here to tell you, doesn't know what the hell they're talking about and can't help you. Maybe they have all of the, the greatest intention in the world. They've got letters beside their name, which meant they went to school. By the way, psychology is not a science. You know, we treat it like it's a medical science. It's not. They're making shit up as they go. And everything is changing every few months. The DSM is continuously changing all the time. They don't have a clue. Just because you went and you read a bunch of books doesn't mean anything. There's no shortage of narcissists and really screwed up people who are therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists. So the fact that you're, you're um, triangulating with the, with the wannabes on YouTube and therapists, again, are you happy? If you're happy, then stop listening to me right now. You're still listening? Okay, so you want to be happy? I can help you. All right, so uh, my therapist says blah, blah, blah. All of the other YouTube videos on BPD don't talk about codependency. But I think you're right. I am. My parents did have big expectations, and he's going to talk about how his parents devalued him. So again, what is codependence? 
Codependence, the definition of codependence. I don't listen to what anybody else has said if they're saying things like, codependency is when you're too clingy and you depend on other people. That's not true. They're taking the word dependence because people are idiots and they see the word dependence and they turn it into something else. It's just a word. Forget about the word. Uh, it's, we should call it devaluation syndrome. It's a much better, much better uh, definition of it. But for now, we'll use the word codependence. The definition of codependence is this. When you get your lovability, your value, when your lovability comes from something external, what you do, how you look, something like that. That's why I start all of these videos by telling you, you have value simply because you exist. Because that is the opposite of codependence, which is your value comes from what you do or how you look or how much money you have. It has nothing to do with who you are. People who love you, again, your borderline or your narcissist is going to love you. Mine said this, I love you. No, she, I'm sorry, she didn't say that. She said, you're the best because you do all the things. I thought that was good. I thought, oh, good. She's going to love me forever because I do all the things. What she was saying was, your value, you only have value when I perceive you doing what I want. The moment you stop doing what I want, you no longer have any value to me. You, I, I, you have no lovability. So codependence is when you get your lovability based on what you do. That's why you, you want to know why you're with a borderline or a narcissist. Because they constantly need you to do things for them. They need you to regulate their feelings. So you constantly have something to do that gives you the false impression that you have value, you have lovability. That's why you're with them. And that's why you can't tolerate the thought of being alone. Because when you're alone, there's nobody requiring you to do something for them, which makes you feel unlovable. And you can't tolerate that because your nervous system thinks you're going to die if you're not lovable. This is human. All humans act like this when they've been narcissistically devalued. All humans do the same thing. So you're no different than anybody else. All right. So, um, and then it goes on to say, uh, so the, the, my therapist says this and other people on YouTube say this, but I think you're right. My parents, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, it's just that my relationship with the BPD is the only thing that stands out. You just got through saying a bunch of other, you just got, you just, you just contradicted yourself. You just said, number one, you've been with a borderline, totally screwed you up. You're, you, you can't make any decisions for yourself. You have to go off of what your therapist says and what other people on YouTube say. And because I'm in the minority, that's a problem for you. Which means, you know, I have to go with the majority because if more people that like, you know, accept me, I'll be okay. Instead of saying, no, I'm going to listen to what's going on inside of me. You're struggling with that because you say, I think I might have codependence. But these other people say, I don't. It's like going to the doctor and you, doctor, there's pus coming out of my shoulder. He goes, no, you're fine. You know, a doctor says I'm okay. What is your body telling you? Are you happy? If you're not happy, then don't you want to fix that? I'm, I can help you do that. Um, but you just said that your parents uh, demanded perfection. What is that? That's codependence. And then you say, but the only thing that stands out is that I was with a borderline. Yeah, well, anyway. So I respond to that and I say, just to be clear, your therapist who knows you were in a dysfunctional relation, ab abusive relationship, by definition a codependent relationship, in other words, uh, your therapist knows you are in a codependent relationship, says that codependence doesn't apply to you. What is wrong with this picture? You are in a codependent dynamic that by definition makes you a codependent. The only thing that stands out is that you were with a borderline. That is all that is needed to be a codependent. You don't have to analyze your childhood even if your childhood was perfect, you became a codependent the moment you decided to stay with an abusive borderline. 
The reason why I say that is because, again, here's another thing. People think they're unique. So all the things that people say, all of the, the excuses and all the explanations, they think that they're telling me something unique about them. And it's called terminal uniqueness. And I'm going to tell you where it comes from. It comes from, again, the feeling that you're not good enough. The feeling that you're not lovable. And that means that you don't feel seen. So part of this is when I label somebody as a codependent, they feel as though I'm taking away their individuality. So the main struggle of the codependent is to be seen as a unique individual. So we know that your parents didn't give you that. They made, they told you you had to be perfect, which means they didn't see you. They said, we can't see you until you do something that we think is perfect. When you achieve something that we think has value, then all of a sudden you'll appear. Of course, that never works. You do everything that they say. They still don't go, oh my God, you just appeared out of nowhere. You're a unique individual. Oh, how amazing. I really appreciate you. It never happens. But you think, you hope it's going to happen. Again, borderline. I love you because you do all the things. Oh my God, if I do all the right things, I'm going to be idealized. Well, the idealization only lasts for a little while and then it goes away. So in other words, you're unseen. Nobody sees you. So you think by telling me all of these specific things about you that you think make you, your situation unique, that somehow I'm going to go, oh, you're, oh, well, you're different. Oh, I didn't, well, in your case, well, that, and again, this therapist is doing that. Well, in your case, even though you were in a codependent relationship, codependence doesn't apply to you. So you like that because that makes you feel unique. But it's, it's inaccurate. I don't know your therapist, but at the very least, they don't understand what they're talking about. All right, so uh, that's the first quote. So it goes on. Again, people don't listen to me. I gave you, I gave you the, the answer. I gave you the link, the direct link to the one thing to heal. That wasn't good enough for you. So you came back and you said, uh, or is, it, is it this one? Yes, I brought up, I have to make this bigger so I can see it. Yes, I brought up your channel and explained that it makes perfect sense. Again, so again, you're, you're triangulating with your therapist. I understand that they're supposed to be uh, a, an expert, so you're triangulating with them. But the guy on the YouTube channel, so I want to encourage you to stop doing that. It doesn't serve you doesn't doesn't help anybody it's just everybody's ego gets gets bruised along the way so stop triangulating anyway so you triangulated you said yes I brought up your channel and explained that it makes perfect sense that I have codependency issues no sane person put ups with that level of bullshit that's true her opinion was that that's not the case what's not the case you weren't abused or that a sane person wouldn't put up with that. So now we, we know a little bit about your therapist. Your therapist is an unhealed codependent. There's no shortage of, I mean, how do you think people end up as therapists? My therapist, my ex-therapist, chronically codependent, took me 30 years, very sophisticated defense systems. But once I, once I was able to see, oh my God, this person's trapped in their codependence. I mean, it is such a position of power. You know, this is why people asked me a long time ago if I wanted to counsel. And I tried counseling people and I gave up after the first couple times because all that was happening was I was listening to them, uh, you know, evade their issues and, and they didn't want to take my advice, which was just go to, go to a 12-step group and work the steps with a sponsor. Because that's the fastest way to heal. You want to heal? That's the fastest way. And no amount of money is going to make me, you know, I don't have that need. I don't have that particular codependent need to be there and have all the answers and listen to you day in and day out and be the savior. So we've got now an understanding. Now, don't take this back to your therapist and say, the guy on the channel says you're codependent. Don't do that. Come on, be kind. You know, they're doing their best. But I'm, I'm here to tell you this is... This is evidence to me that this is an unhealed codependent. If 
I say to you that no sane person puts up with this level of, of abuse. And her response is to say, well, that's not true. In other words, sane people walk head first into a bear trap all the time. I'm sane and I'm uh, in an abusive relationship and that's how I became a therapist. Don't just use some common sense here. I'm here to tell you that that's what I hear. I don't know the person, but just based on what you said, if this person doesn't agree that a sane, healthy person doesn't walk into and choose to stay in this level of abuse, if they don't see that, there's something wrong with this picture. And, you know, you go to a doctor and a doctor doesn't know how to treat you, you go to another one. So uh, her opinion was that that's not the case, but instead doubled down on my relationship with my mother, who, by the way, was very overprotective, and somehow she thought I saw my mother in the BPD or something along those lines. You've just described codependence. <laughs> so your therapist says, no, that's not codependent. It's because of this codependent relationship dynamic with your mother. And of course, this is called transference. I talk about it all the time on the channel. You take your unresolved feelings towards your abusive mother who told you you weren't good enough and so you were trained to become something different than what you were or do things in order to be perfect and you now walk into adulthood believing that that's where your lovability comes from. Some abusive woman comes along and uh, idealizes you and then tells you you have to be perfect and you fall in love with her. Well, you've got unresolved issues with your mom. It's called transference. Your therapist and I are in complete agreement with that, but her misunderstanding is she doesn't understand that that's called codependence. <laughs> and there's a cure for it. Um, anyway, so yeah, you just say, of course it's about your mom. And that's why you're codependent. And then you say, by the way, I did start the one thing a while back. It was just impossible to get a sponsor and slowly gave up. That is bullshit. If you were dying of a lethal, fatal illness and somebody told you that there was a cure and it took some effort to get the cure, you would get it. You wouldn't stop the moment it became difficult. You wouldn't slowly give up and die. So you're under the, the assumption that you're okay. That, you know, and if you are, again, are you happy? If you're happy, then stop watching the video. Go do your life. Are you miserable? Do you want to be happy? I've told you exactly how to do that. So don't give me this nonsense that it was impossible. By the way, just to let you know, uh, Codependence Anonymous is notorious for the people in there very reticent to sponsor you. I don't know why that is, but that's the case. I was in another 12-step group where people would tackle you in the meeting and give you their phone number and say, call me, I'll sponsor you. So instead, go to adult children of alcoholics. Um, it's not just for adult children of alcoholics. It's now adult children of alcoholics and dysfunctional childhood or something like that. So it works. It's the same thing and these people will sponsor you. In fact, they've been trained to sponsor people. So when you go to one of these meetings, whether it's online or whether it's in person and you say, I want to sponsor, you will leave that meeting with a phone number. So I'm with you on that. Codependence uh, can be very difficult to get a sponsor. But even so, if you were desperate and you were completely committed to getting a sponsor, you would have had a sponsor. So I'm not going to buy that. See, here's the thing. You believe your, your own nonsense. I'm not because I've been there. Other people are going to believe you because they haven't been there or they're going to co-sign your, your, they're, co they're going to codependently co-sign you. I'm not going to do that. So I know for a fact that if you had made the decision that your life depended on it, you would have found a sponsor. And then let's see, what else do you, what, what other excuse do you give me? Because you give me another excuse. Um, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I did start the one thing a while back. It was just impossible to get a sponsor and slowly gave up. But now we have a local in-person meeting, so I will explore that option. Do you want to save your life? Do you want to be happy? 
then don't explore the option. Because again, I, I want you to hear, I want you to hear the entitlement behind that. I'm giving you, I'm, that example is not an exaggeration. If you don't believe that your life isn't on the line, then you're wasting your time on my channel. There's no shortage of people that absolutely destroy their lives because they don't do the one thing. It might take you a few years, but it'll destroy your life. It will get in there and destroy you. Uh, and if you want to survive it, there's one way out. If there was another way out, I'd let you know. I'm not, I'm not opposed to the idea of there being other ways out. I only know of one way, and it's a guaranteed way out. It's a guaranteed cure. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be entitled? Again, entitlement comes from this posturing of I'm good, I'm okay, I'm a good person, I'm lovable, I'm right. I have a, it's entitlement and it's, it's, it's a false, it's a facade. I'm going to explore that option. Well, I explored that option, like you're looking at what kind of stock you want to buy. Well, I was looking at that stock and, you know, the it's not the return on it. Well, it's, Do you want to be happy or not? So stop posturing. Stop pretending that you're okay. Stop trying to pretend that you have time and that this is an option for you. Because if you want to be happy and you suffer from codependence, then it is in your best interest to get to the place where you realize you do not have any other options and that time is running out. Instead of the codependent facade that says, you know, I'm going to explore that option. Yeah, yeah, you know, if I have some time, I'll, you know, you say that. Well, we have an in-person meeting. And if you know anything about it, these meetings, CODA, ACA, any other 12-step group, there are online meetings that you can go to, Zoom meetings, doesn't matter where you are in the world. So this idea that you could only find a sponsor if you could get a, a, you know, an in-person meeting, and now that that's convenient, you're going to do that. Well, great, go to the meeting. I'm, I, I prefer in-person meetings. But let's stop the bullshit here. You're not in a position where you have this opportunity to do whatever you want, whenever you want. How do I know that? Because you're coming onto my channel months or years later after choosing not to follow my suggestions and you want to engage. You want me to get in this dramatic, heated debate with you so that you feel like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is you don't have an option. So after all this time I put into you, if you don't do the one thing, I'm not going to listen to your comments ever again because it means you're not serious and I'm only interested in helping people who are serious are you happy do you want to be happy I know the solution uh, you say uh, by the way we have a lot of da, da, da. I have not been in an abusive relationship since which doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything if you've watched my channel, what happens is when the relationship ends, you're in that interrupted phase, right? Because it's, it's, it's um, interrupted, what do they call it? I forget the, the psychological phrase for it. Um, intermittent reinforcement. So you're in between the reinforcement stage. Just because you're out of the relationship is meaningless. So again, stop trying to posture, stop trying to, to make yourself look good in my eyes. If you're on my channel and you're wondering if you're codependent, you've got a problem. So stop pretending that everything's okay. It's not. The only reason you're out of the relationship is because she left you. So stop acting like you did something, you know, to end it. You'd still be with her if she still, if she called you up right now, you'd jump back into her arms. So again, stop posturing. I don't care that you're not in it. You're in pain. It doesn't matter whether you're in the relationship or out of it. You're still stuck in your codependent intermittent reinforcement loop. Um, I've not been in an abusive relationship since, and I don't have a problem saying no and setting boundaries. Well, good for you. I don't care if people don't like me. I don't believe you. 
family members or friends, but I guess if the right, or shall we say wrong person comes along again, there is danger. Right, so you just contradicted everything you said. If you really didn't care what anybody said and you were perfectly capable of setting boundaries, then there wouldn't be any danger. There's no danger on my end. I don't feel that danger. I, I, I have experienced, I've looked into, I've met, and I've walked away from without any pain, without any drama, because I've done the one thing and I do the one thing on a regular basis. And if you do that, then you never have to have these contradictory you know, communications with yourself. Um, but I guess the writer shall come there is I could, uh, there's danger, I could make the same mistakes again and I want to prevent that at all costs. So I'm going to hold you to that. You say you want to prevent this at all costs. That means you don't give yourself the right to say, I tried to get a sponsor, but it wasn't convenient, therefore I couldn't do it. Okay, well, I'll explore that option, you know, in the future. Well, if you want to do at all costs, again, trying to get me to accept you by saying that, then I, I will be more impressed, if that means anything to you, with you actually living that which means if you really were willing to go do that at all costs, you would have found a sponsor by now. You would have, you would have explored, if, if you didn't find one in ACA, you would have, or uh, a CODA, you would have gone to another Zoom meeting, you would have done everything you could have. But even then, you would have looked at other 12-step groups. So don't give me this nonsense. You really want to do that? Prove it to me with your actions. All right, and then I responded, already in, uh, to what I uh, I already ex uh, responded in my response there anyway so let's, again let's take a look at what codependence is codependence is a relationship dynamic you're involved with a code with, with a, an abusive person you're already in a codependent dynamic number two the individual who does that by definition it makes you a codependent Number three, all parties in dysfunctional relationship are codependents and suffer from codependence. The narcissist, the borderline, are codependent. Why? Because what is the definition of codependence? When you get your value based on something external. The narcissist get, gets their value based on being worshipped. The borderline gets her value based on being the perfect worshipper. So they're getting their value based on things outside of them. Their codependence. And codependence, they merge together because their wounds bring them together. And also, you're requiring your, code, your borderline to love you. You haven't got that. She doesn't give it to you. But you want that. And so you jump through all kinds of hoops because you think if you do this, this, and this, then she has to love you. So you are, you are hoping to turn her into uh, your codependent because you'll hold that over her head. I loved you. I took you to the hospital. I've been here. I've taken care of you. I loved you when nobody else did. Therefore, you have to love me. You have to stay with me. And none of those has anything to do with what real love is. Anyway, that's another subject. All right. So there you go, guys. Um, if you want to heal, there's only one way out of this. It's to do the one thing. You don't believe me? Fine. Continue doing what you're doing and see if you can answer the question, am I happy? Do I feel comfortable within myself? Am I truly comfortable being alone or with somebody else? Do I need to be with somebody else? Do I need to be alone? And forget about what it sounds like when you tell somebody that. Forget about that and think about how you feel. And make that your priority. Being healthy, being happy, make that your priority and do whatever the hell it takes. And if you're willing to do whatever the hell it takes, the good news is there's a very simple solution. It doesn't cost any money. You can do it from home and uh, it's guaranteed that if you follow directions, meaning you actually work the steps with a sponsor, all 12 of them, not by yourself, but with a sponsor, 
It is guaranteed that you will heal. You will absolutely, I guarantee you this, you will heal from the wounds from that relationship. That is a guarantee. The rest of it, well, that's more, you know, that's that's a longer story. But yeah, you'll still have to deal with your internal stuff. You'll still have to deal with your childhood stuff. But all of that can also be healed over time. So if you want to be happy, do the one thing. You don't know what that is? Go and search for it on my channel. The one thing that heals BPD and NPD abuse. You can also find it in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. Go follow my instructions exactly, and I guarantee you, you can be freed of the pain of the relationship dynamic, and there is a very good chance you will never fall into another one if you follow my suggestions. If you want to tell me how unique you are and fight with me, I can't help you. You're on your own. There you go. There's my video for who knows however long. I'll see you guys next time, and remember, you have value simply because you exist.